here. I've been trying to get through this natural stone testing for so long, months now, uh, and we finally made some time today. My friend Hiro uh, is visiting from San Francisco. He's from Nomika in San Francisco. It's an awesome, like, modern Japanese izakaya up there. There's some really, really delicious food. In fact, I think it was the best meal that I had last time I was up in San Francisco. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Don Habe was killer, man. Don Habe is it's, it's yeah. super homey. It's like nostalgic, indeed. Yeah, really, really comforting. And the tori karage. I really like that a lot, too. Anyways, um, Hiro is super dorky about knives, just like I am su super dorky about knives. And he also is super dorky about Japanese natural stones. So I figured as long as he was here, we should do this. So we're going to uh, use this Yanagiba. It's a white number two Yanagiba. And we're going to test out a bunch of different stones that we have and that we'll be putting up on the website uh, so that you guys have ideas about how we feel about them, how they work. Uh, you can see how muddy or not muddy they are. We can give you our impressions about how hard or soft they are. Uh, and you can just kind of see the stones in action as we go. So uh, we're going to start off and Josh is going to pass me this beast of a stone that's over here. Uh, <laughs> what do we got? All right, so we have a Monzento. This one is super large. It's 100 by 100 by 230. I'm going to take this little sticker off and pass this back to you. Uh, so this is our first stone, big Monzento. Uh, Monzento are usually medium grit stones, kind of in like the 1,000 to, I guess, three, 4,000 grit, depending on, on each stone. Uh, they can sometimes be a little bit porous. As you can see, this one uh, soaks in a decent bit of water in the beginning. Uh, it's just starting to have some sit on the surface. And there's a little bit of like reddish color in here and brown color. Uh, the most popular and famous Monzento, they were the Aka Monzento, and there's a bunch of synthetic stones based on them, uh, which is the, the red Monzen. Um, you'll see like Naniwa makes some, and a few other people make them. So this one soaks in a decent bit of water as we go. It's, it's huge, like just massive. Anyways, we're going to try this out, and I'll show you kind of how it looks and how it feels, and then here you give it a shot, and then we'll go on to the next one. So again, uh, it's soaking in a little bit of water, so I have to add a little bit more as I go. So it feels like firmly medium grit and definitely feels muddy and you can see it looks pretty muddy too. Um, I guess it's like medium, medium soft is not hard. And because it soaks in a lot of water, it's actually easy to create and then keep a lot of mud on the surface. It smells great. Yep. Cool, so you can see like a little bit of how muddy it is. And let's take a look at what kind of finish it leaves. So as you can expect from most kind of medium grid natural stones, you'll get really defined uh, high contrast, but you'll see visible scratch patterns as you go. And the, the scratches on here seem to be a little bit coarser, so I'm looking at something in like the 1,000 to 2,000 grit range. Um, so hopefully you guys can see what that looks like. And then I'm going to pass it on to Hero, and you can try it out and kind of let us know what your impressions are. Awesome. I actually have a Monzento that I bought from you. Yeah? Oh yeah, like a long time ago, man. Yeah, it's the blue and gray one. Yeah. I've always been kind of partial to the Monzento. I think a lot of people really like the Alto. And of course, Alto are great stones, but having something that's super soft and muddy for kitchen knives uh, can, can be really helpful, uh, especially in terms of getting like soft, uh, even, even finishes that look smooth and, and very even. Uh, so I've, I've always kind of gone for the Monzento. It's definitely a little harder than the one I have at home. Uh, just sorry, get published. Is it up now? This one's harder than the one you have at yeah, home? Yeah, definitely the scratch patterns. Like the one I have at home is probably more... I think it's finer. It's finer. Yeah. Because like, the scratch patterns, like, it's almost like... The Jigane and Hagane is like super clear. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is definitely like more medium grit than like fine grit. But the finish is nice though. Yeah, yeah. like super contrasty and, and pretty smooth and even. Sam, as long as you're here, you want to give it a shot too? Yeah. Cool. And Josh, maybe you can get in on this one too, in front of the camera. I think we have another Samue on my chair if you want. So what do you think, Sam? Yeah, I like how fast it builds up uh, mud. It seems decently fast cutting too. Yeah. 
This smell is awesome, man. Yeah. The natural smell always gives that, it's like, the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like you walk into the forest and like just dug some stuff up and it's that, that in, same, yeah. yeah. I mean, more than anything, than the cutting teeth, uh, the tenant toy produces when you're cutting like anything, no. it's, yeah. it's, un, it's unlike anything other. Yeah, well, because you get that mix between like what you would expect from a refined edge, but you still end up with a lot of bite just yeah. from, from all the various sized teeth. I think a lot of people say it lasts longer and like maybe to some degree, but I just never bought into that uh, in terms of like uh, extreme difference in how, how long it lasts. Cause it's there, but it's not like crazy. Anyways, um, cool. So that, that's our first stone. So again, this big Monzento. Uh, so I'm going to kind of rinse this off. In fact, Sam, can I pass this on to you and have you rinse this one off when we move on to our next stone? Yeah. Sorry, dude. All right. All right. Stone one done. Moving on to stone two. So this is another Monzento and it's 215 millimeters by 55 by 65. Uh, so a little bit smaller, like half the size of the other one. Um, so here you can see what this stone is like. And uh, we'll use a stone holder for this one because it fits and that makes sense. So this one's pretty narrow on top. Uh, the surface feels coarser to begin with already. Um, and there's actually a big crack in this one. I don't know how that's going to play out. We'll see. Uh, you see it? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah I think it's all the way through. It comes, yeah. it comes around to this side too. Huh. Well, this stone might not last that long in one whole piece. We'll see what happens. But uh, this is the second Monsanto that we're going to do. We're gonna give this one a shot. And this one's a little bit more red than the last one, but again, I think the, the surface is gonna be a little bit coarser feeling. Yeah, it sounds coarser, yeah. feels coarser. I'm soaking in a little bit more water already. This might be in like the 800 to 1000 grit range. Super, super porous in terms of how much water it's soaking in. And it's tough, I think, on like larger knives mm -hmm. when the, the stone is super narrow. Yeah, I can tell the gas on the knife, like, well, like some side. <laughs> huh. Yeah, this is, this is definitely a coarser stone. Let's take a look and see what things look like. I think this one's a little bit harder feeling than the last one. There's definitely more visible scratches. They're, they're deeper, much more pronounced. That same kind of nice contrast is there, but uh, the scratches are definitely more, more visible. It soaks in a lot more water, but feels uh, a little bit harder. All right, Hero, you're up, dude. I'll do. Oh, yeah. You can feel like on the surface, even with your fingers, it's like a, a coarser I mean, feeling. Look at scratch pattern, it's like 800. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely on the coarser side of stuff. It, it sounds coarse. Yeah. Is everything all right there? Mm -hmm. Cool. What do you think? Harder? Softer? I think it's way harder. Yeah. It's coarser too. I mean, the scratch patterns yeah. are like way deeper. Cool. But still the... The separation is still nice. So the contrast, the contrast yeah. is still nice. But I feel like that's a lot of just like coarser stones in general. Like, you know, everyone will use like a 400 grit stone and be like, oh, the, the contrast is so deep. And like, of, of course it's deep, man. With a 400 grit stone, it's always going to look that way. So I think, you know, with this kind of stuff being that it's a medium grit stone, especially this one being on the coarser side of it, that, that contrast is going to be a little bit more normal. Mm -hmm. Sam, you want to give it a shot? Yeah. Sweet. This is like a fun way to test stuff out. Yeah, you yeah. get like multiple opinions on yeah. things. And now we just got to figure out a way to like link to the specific times mm -hmm. for each stone so people can uh, look this stuff up later. What are yeah. your thoughts, Sam? That's a nice um, tactile feedback, nice cutting speed.
What about relative to the last one? Uh, faster cutting for sure. Do you wear a ring still when you sharpen? Yeah. <laughs> Does it doesn't like get in the way or bother you at all? Mm, maybe sometimes. I've never been able to like even when I was cooking, no watch, no ring. Do you wear a watch here when you when yeah, you cook? Yeah, I have to. This is actually because yeah. you're like uptight about the time. Yeah, uh, I mean it's like yeah, the keen time like yeah, you know it's like because like a lot of time on clock in the restaurant, it's like it's off. It always ends up being like five minutes off. Get tired of it. Ah, uh, so it's tough when you're like timing out recipes or firing for tables and stuff. Well, I just I just really like you know like for like you know pre shift. Like, I just want to make sure that like, time's right. Yeah, definitely like the contrast. Yeah, the contrast is nice. Uh, switch with you over here. So hopefully you guys can see here. We'll try and zoom in on this really quick. Bring it a little over. Cool. And uh, that should give you a good idea of what the contrast is like. Boop, boop, boop. All right, uh, so that is this Monzento. So let's move on to whatever our next stone is, which I guess is another Monzento. Sam, come on. <laughs> sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. Thank you. All right, so one more Monzento. Uh, <laughs> this one is 45 millimeters by 60 millimeters by 195 millimeters. So we're getting like progressively smaller as we go. This one is also pretty narrow. Uh, I think this might be tough for a lot of people with like larger larger knives. This might be better for like small chisels or that kind of stuff as a, as a medium grit stone, but we'll see. Feels immediately less coarse than the last one. Uh, has a little bit more reddish brownish color in there. And there's like this cool blue streak that comes through for a little bit. Anyways, here we go. So already it's soaking in less water than the last one and it's still more porous than a lot of the finishing stones are, but I think you can see it's holding water on the surface a little bit better already. Feels, feels nice. Definitely finer grit than the last one. Maybe as fine or slightly finer than the first one that we were on. You know what it's the tip, the tip part that gets to me when I'm doing it on these narrow stones. I'm like, I gotta like really tuck in. That's why, actually, that's the only reason why I don't have narrow stones, because my knives are all like, yeah, shakuchi. You, yeah, you have <laughs> shakuchi. This contrast is beautiful though. I hope you guys can see it. it's a much darker contrast. The scratches are still visible, but finer than what they were on the last one. All right, here, I'll pass this one on to you. I think it's starting to sound like a little bit smoother or creamier already. Sometimes it's just about like working through that initial surface. Mm -hmm. This one almost feels like uh, the one I have. Yeah, yeah. softer than the first mm -hmm. one and, and a little bit finer. Yep, and the one I have is about two to five. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is probably in that like two, 2,000 grit range. Maybe a little bit higher, but I doubt it. But I like it. Yeah. I wish it was bigger. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it was bigger. It's very, yeah. like, super close to the one I have. Cool. Can you show the contrast to the camera? Yeah. Yep. Look good? Yeah. Sweet. Cool. Sam, you want to give this one a shot too? Mm -hmm. Do you use your Monsanto a lot, Hero? Yeah. In a mini, right before I go to Suita. So. So your coarse stone is synthetic and then you go directly from that to natural stuff or do you start with a medium grit synthetic and then go to the Monsanto? I go to, you know, one. You, I, I go actually your 1000, your big 1000. Yeah. And then go into Monsanto mm -hmm. and then Mario Masevich Shirosuita. Cool. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I bet the, the Shirosuita probably takes a long time then because you're jumping from like a pretty low grit to a pretty high grit. Yeah, but my Monzento is pretty fine though. Alright. Uh, the one that you gave me, I think it's almost like 3,000. Yeah, but e even then, like, I mean, I tried a lot of the, the Maro Yama Suitas and they were, they're, they're pretty fine. They're pretty fine, but sometimes yeah. I go, I go, sometimes I go Hideriyama first. Yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like that's got to like at least break it up mm-hmm. a little bit. I think a lot of people don't realize that uh, from that whole region, all the, the silica content starts out around that same like 6,000, yep. 8,000 grit. Um, so there's, there's not so much variation, variation initially, it's just the hardness of the stone and how it all plays together. Sam, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, it feels a bit harder than the first one. That's Sam is the quietest reviewer ever. What's it like uh, <laughs> shortening on a, on a more narrow stone? Is that it's a bit more challenging. Yeah, the tip part, right? That's the part that gets yeah. tricky. Cool. All right. Sweet. Monsanto done. Okay. That was super dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> forever, forever memorialized on, uh, on YouTube, right? Yeah. All of our mistakes right. stay with us forever now. Including right. your flub right now. So, uh, <laughs> for, forever river? Sure. Uh, so this one is an alto. Uh, it's supposed to be on the harder side of things. It measures 215 millimeters by 60 millimeters by 60 millimeters. Um, again, you know, a lot of people are asking me for alto all the time, and so I've tried to bring in some uh, that I find that, you know, make me happy. Uh, it's tough. You know, I'll go, I have like a few people that I trust for natural stones, and so I spend a lot of time talking to them, and they make recommendations to me about what they think is good or what they think is bad, uh, and based on their recommendations, then, you know, I'll, I'll buy a bunch of stuff or try out different things uh, while I'm there. But alto, they were really popular for a long time, and, and a lot of people bought them, and now there aren't that many good ones anymore. Uh, so finding really good ones takes a lot of time and patience, and uh, you end up buying a lot of stuff that I'm not always super happy with. But this one, definitely, the surface already uh, feels smoother than the, the last few that we've had. Uh, I think this is going to be finer grit by far. And it's, it's way less porous. Oh, it feels nice. This is hard. And you can see it's like a darker bluish, greenish, grayish color here. Again, kind of like on the more narrow side of things. It's definitely a hard stone. But at the same time, it feels infinitely smoother when compared to what we were doing just a few minutes ago. But you can, you can start to see that there are parts of the blade that is starting to polish. So it's not leaving as smooth of a contrast. There's like polished chunks. This is, this is kind of normal with hard stones where you get streaking around the curve. Uh, and then there's these splotchy sections where you can see it's starting to polish in some areas. There's not a huge amount of contrast, but the scratch pattern is significantly more refined than it was on the previous ones. Yeah, like almost, almost mirror-like. This is this is probably going to be in like the five six k range of things. All right, hero. All right. Let's see what you think. Mm. You know, this stone reminds me of like my Tajima, like on Japan, actually. Oh yeah, even like yeah, it feels like my Tajima. In terms of hardness as well. Yeah, hardness. Yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty hard stone, I think. It was, in, it was in like Kyoto, I picked up the, this Tajima, like a blue, um, the, you've probably seen a picture, it's like gray with blue speckles inside of it. Yeah. Yeah, this feels exactly like it. Yeah, it's fucking close. Same kind of grit too? Yeah. It's, it's huh. still, almost a... Yeah, see, I feel like this is the kind of thing then, like, you know, going back to your, your methods with your Suita, like if you, if you started on this and go to your Suita, yeah. that's going to like, that's got to significantly reduce the amount of time that it takes for you yeah. to get the most out of that finishing stone. You're not making like such a huge jump, jump with it. <laughs> You're not yeah. taking such a huge dump. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Because here we say inappropriate things all day long that I just can't stop myself when we're live on, on YouTube. Just, uh, you know, just can't help it sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's like my Tajima for sure. Cool. Yeah, same, same thing. You're seeing like all the yep. streaking around, uh, around the curvy areas yep. and like parts that are getting mirror polished. Mm-hmm. Especially near the heel, that section is starting to get super polished. Sweet. All right, Sam. Let's give it a shot. I wonder if this is a format that works well for you guys in terms of hearing us speak about the stones and, and test stuff out and see. Uh, I always try and think of different ways that we can share with you our opinions of how things work in, a, in an easy to understand and easy to see kind of way. And 
before I would just type up my opinions on things on each of the stone pages, but I feel like being able to see things in action and have a video that goes along with it and also hear kind of live impressions, but not just one person, multiple people's impressions as we go through, has to be a better way to really get a, a good idea of how these stones are working. So let us know what you guys think uh, in terms of our format of doing this and how easy it is to see or, or understand uh, what's going on with this stuff. So Sam, what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, hmm. Nice hard feeling. Do you like harder stones in general or you go for softer ones usually? Uh, softer, usually. Yeah, but, uh, yeah I'm, I'm the same. Kind of feels nice once you build up some mud. Yeah, it gives that like cushion, yeah, like that mud cushion. Yeah, hard stones definitely don't feel that great. Yeah, initially, yeah. it takes like some time to, to get things rolling to a, a place where they start to feel good and look good and be comfortable to use. When I was sharpening a lot of tenant torches down in Kyoto, when I was yeah. in Japan, I have sharpened a lot of stones that like I was just like, this is not. So yeah, bad. but the woodworkers they love that stuff, man. Like yeah, that's like stuff, what they go know? for. Yeah, there's a lot of guys I guess that visit Totoria for like. You know, like planes and razors and stuff, and that yeah. works perfect with super. When the, when I was there a long, long time ago, I was the only like knife-oriented person in the entire place, and the rest was just all uh, woodworkers. All right, that's a much, much, much finer finish. Yeah, I like the scratch pattern. Yeah, which, which there's more a contrast. Bit more contrast. Yeah, and like a smoother look to it too. Yeah, because it definitely has that like splotchy, streaky thing going on. All right, next up. We have one more alto. Uh, this is another one that's supposed to be on the harder side of things and measures 60 millimeters by 75 millimeters by 220 millimeters. Um, similar kind of color. There's like a little line over here and like one over here with a little bit of red in it. But in general, it's that same kind of bluish, greenish, gray look going on. Uh, it doesn't soak in a lot of water. Uh, feels relatively hard still. Let's see how this one goes. Oh, I think this one is, is way harder than the last one. And, and I think it might also be a little bit coarser. The mud is like a dark blue-gray color too. Yeah, I think this, this must be coarser than that last one that we just tried out. It feels way grippier and like more more grabby as I move across the surface with the stone. I have a feeling though that the, the contrast is gonna look a lot more even from this, and, and it does. Uh, it's not as pronounced in terms of contrast as the Monzento, in terms of like darkness of color, but it's significantly more even than the other Alto that we tried just a second ago. And it's, it's funny because it does feel harder at the same time. Alright, cool. So, we have a look kind of like this. And uh, here, let's see what you think, man. Contrast is better than the other one. Yeah. yeah. And, and like much smoother looking, mm -hmm. which is funny because it, it felt very hard, but uh, it worked. It got the job done. Do you feel that same kind of like grippiness to mm -hmm. the surface? It kind of reminds me of my like uh, two thousand grit stone a lot uh, in terms of like that the like pink one. Yeah. yeah, I have that one. I like I actually like that one a lot. Yeah, but it has that same like grippy. You know, it's like uh, track tires for racing. Mm -hmm. Like they just grip the road as you go. It has like that same kind of feeling uh, as you move across the stone surface. So you feel connected to it. Like you can feel what's going on, but it definitely makes it feel like a more aggressive stone. I think. Definitely don't hate it, it's nice. Cool. Like Alright, Sam, give it a shot. And then I think after this we're on to finishing stones, right? Sweet.
And because we are doing this live, you know, if you guys have questions, uh, we can see stuff in the chat over here. Uh, so feel free to bug us with any questions that you might have about the stones as we're working with them. If we can answer them and they make sense within the scope of what we're doing, uh, we'll do our best. Otherwise, I'm happy to get back to you later. Um, you can also email me questions anytime at john, J-O-N, at JapaneseKnifeImports.com. Right, what do you think, Sam? I actually really like this, though. What do you like about it? Uh, like the tactile feedback. It feels like it's cutting like fast. Yeah, it does feel like a more aggressive stone. It's nice. Are you generally going for things that have that kind of uh, aggressive feel to them? Mm. I think, in my experience with you, you seem to like the things that are like smoother and creamier. As long as they, they cut fast, it's fine, but you seem to like those like resinoid based things. Like I know you like the Geshen Synthetic Natural a lot, uh, and yeah. uh, you know those are on the, the smoother, creamier side of things for sure. Yeah. That finish looks nice and even though. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. actually pretty nice. I wish the scratch pattern was a little bit more refined, but part of uh, that might just be us not having spent enough time after that really coarse Monsanto. Yeah. Like, I, I can see there's a couple of scratches really deep in the edge, and like, I know when that one went on there. Cool. All right. Let's do our next stone. So, uh, what do we have here? So, this one is the Shobu Tomai Kopa. Uh, this one says number two, so I'm going to say number two so we can keep track of stuff on here uh, a little bit more easily. This one's a lot smaller and a lot narrower. As you can see, it's not a massive chunk of stone like the ones that we were looking at earlier. There's a little piece out here that I guess either came off a long time ago, but uh, this is this is how it came into us. Um, so let's give this one a shot. So this should be more in the realm of what we expect from finishing stones. Um, oh, that's cool. When there's water on here, you can see some dark spots over here and like a pretty yellow color the rest of the way around. Um, Surface feels smooth. Let's see how it sharpens. Oh, it's fast. Immediately when you when you sharpen on it, you can see metal being removed. Um, and it doesn't feel like super hard as a stone either. This is nice. Looks good. Dude, I think you're gonna like this stone, Hero. Oh, the Alto? Yeah, no, the Monzento like, have like a really strong earthy smell. You can smell it. This, yeah. The smaller Alto smells a little more than this one. Yeah, Look definitely. at this thing, man. This thing is like a oh, super fast cutting stone. And it's not even mud, dude. It's all just metal. Oh, metal? Wow. Yeah, like look at that, man. And there's barely any stone particles in there. It's just it's just taking metal off. What is up with this stone? This is cool. And it's holding water on the surface really nicely, too. So like I haven't I haven't really even needed to add any more water. But it's still working up mud pretty well. Man, I'm sure if I spend some more time on this, I can get a much more even, uh, smooth looking finish because I don't think this is going to be, but the, the scratch pattern is significantly more refined. Uh, it's a harder stone, so you'll see still some streaking and some splotchiness, but that might also be from that alto that we were on just a minute ago. The, the edge is starting to approach a more mirror-like finish with a, a slight white hue to it and some like faint wispy lines. Dude, this is this is a cool stone. This is a really all right, all right. I'm out of the way. Hero. <laughs> See what you think. Yeah, this one's nice. I mean it feels yeah. like it feels nice. And then you see it and you're like, oh it's it's also cutting really fast. I mean, I guess it's not going to be like the perfect stone for a, a beautiful kasumi finish, but I think you could put a really, really nice base down and then hit it with some finger stones real quick, and uh, and you would have a really nice looking finish on that. For what it's worth, if you guys are ever interested, we have finger stones. I don't have them on the website, um, but we, we generally have some around because I use them. Uh, and so we try to stock the things that we use here. Uh, and so we have some Hazia and Jizia finger stones. Uh, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, feel free to shoot us an email and, uh, you know, we can let you know what we have in stock and uh, what kind of price they're selling for. Super nice. It yeah. feels really good. Yeah. Yeah, the tactile feeling of it is, mm -hmm. is really spectacular. And you can see it's starting to approach that, like, mirror, mirror-ish kind of finish. Like, like a hazy? Yeah. Hazy, hazy mirror, yeah. 
But the lamination line looks nice, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's yeah. cool, like, separation. Mm -hmm. But then the, the Jigane is not as smooth or even. Yep. Like, you get splotches of mirror-like finishing. Mm -hmm. But it's it's definitely a, a much finer grit stone. This has to be in, like, the 8K range, something like that, I would say. Cool. I like it. The feels nice. All right, Sam. Let's see what you think. It's like a test. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can just tell you you're wrong, maybe. <laughs> All right, what about your initial impressions? Uh, nice and smooth. What about like hardness? Pretty hard. Uh, not super hard, but like firm, but not like what you would call a hard stone. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I call those medium hard. Yeah. Good for knives. Yeah. yeah, yeah, in a range of things that's good for knives, yeah. If you go too hard, it doesn't so much make sense. If you go too soft, it's nice in the beginning or when you're trying to fill in high and low spots, but it sucks in terms of really getting like those those crisp edges yeah. uh, that, that look pretty. And, and cut with like, like that additional bite. The teeth. Yeah. So far of the things that we've tried, this is the, the most enjoyable. You know, regardless of the different grids and all that kind of stuff, this one was just a really enjoyable sharpening experience. The cutting speed is impressive too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you yeah. look at it, there's just all this, all this metal. Cool. All right. Yeah, it has a nice, like, smooth feeling. I'm sharpening. Yeah, yeah, firm, but like still smooth. Cool. All right, let's move on to our next one. So, next up, we have the other Shobu Tomai Kopa. This one we have labeled as number one. Um, just to help make sense of things as we go through all our testing. So clearly this is a different color. Uh, this is more of that kind of like sandstone, red, pink. There's like little bits of yellow here on the edge. Let's see how it looks when it gets wet. Now uh, yellow shows up a little bit more. There's a cool little line across here. And it's, it's like a yellow, pinkish, reddish, brownish mix. What's the smell like on that other one? Not as earthy? No, not as earthy, a little... I wish you guys could see behind the camera. We're all sitting there <laughs> smelling the stones, like... Yeah, super dorky. Taking stuff to a whole new level. This actually smells good now that I just did that. Like... <laughs> Alright, cool. So here we are on the other... Shobu uh, Tomai Kopa. So again, fast cutting stone. Nice feel. I think this one feels a little bit harder than the last one. It might even be faster cutting though. Holy crap. It cuts fast. Yeah, man, look at that. Wow. Holy crap. And like a decent bit of mud too. It's definitely got a firmer feel. So like the mud gives it that like initial give and there's like just a little bit of give to the surface and then under, right underneath that it feels dense. Like if I had to, if I had to rate stones, we put like our Geshen 6000 Splash and Go, the blue speckled one we have, like here. This would be like a five. This would be like a 7.5. Like not crazy hard, but definitely like a noticeable amount more than uh, more than this. Let's see what kind of smooth, even finish we can pull off from this. And look, like that mud development is nice too. All right. Ooh, yeah. Uh, no, you're still getting like some some spots. I feel like with time that could come out, and there's like a little bit of streaking around the edge, but the contrast is nice. Uh, I don't think it's actually as fine as the last one. I think it's a little bit coarser because the the white wispy faint lines definitely feel more hazy here, whereas they felt more mirror-like on the one that we just used a couple of seconds ago. But I don't know, it's still pretty, pretty freaking nice. All right, dude. All right. Yeah, I think the speed of this one was like the most impressive part of it for me. It's, it's definitely a smoother, more even finish than the last one, but I don't think quite as fine. Hmm. 
What do you think so far? I like it. Um, I don't know yet. <laughs> like right in between. Like is it? It's close to the last one, but as as good. I don't know. Maybe. I think I still like the other one a little think, bit more in terms yeah. of feel, but this has better speed. That one feels better. Yeah. That one feels like just gliding. Yeah, this feels, I think for me, a little bit harder, like a little bit more firm. It's solid though. Yeah. You know with natural stones, right, where you look at it head on and it's like misty and then you put like a slight angle on it and all of a sudden you have this like beautiful glossy mirror. I feel like that's where it is. So I'm standing off to your edge, just like off to the side of you a little bit. And so from the angle that I see, I see like a mirror. Yeah. But when you look straight oh, on, yeah, there goes, yeah. yeah, when you look straight on, you're like, like oh, it's like hazy and misty and white. I still like the other one actually. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Sam, let's see what you have to say about it. Are you using camera? Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what's cool about this camera that we're using is that we can actually set up different shots. You'll see, like, um, you know, Josh can actually pull it up to our face or go down. Uh, and it's all just from the one camera, but it'll cut to different shots as we go. I thought it might give people a, a, a more immersive experience in, uh, in what we're doing over here. But anyways, back to the stone. What do you think? Uh, it feels nice. It's pretty similar to the other one. Uh, it's like slightly harder. Mm -hmm. Do you like this more or do you like the other one? Uh, I don't know. It's close enough that you just can't tell? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still getting like the smell over here now from the, mm -hmm. like that earthy. It's nice. Does that one smell stronger than the, the Copa number two? Yeah, I'm, I'm standing over here oh. next to Sam and, and I can smell it right now. Here. Whereas the other one, like I was all up on it and uh, I could smell it then. But. I think if I were to buy either two, I'll, I'll pick the first one. Yeah? Actually. I probably would go for the first one myself. But yeah. we have we have a lot of customers that like... Which is number two, by the way. Which is number two. two. This is number one. Yeah. <laughs> we're here to confuse you. Um, a lot of our customers really like harder stones though. Um, and so, you know, not not everyone shares in my in my... Preference. I like hard stones better. Yeah, for for synthetic stones too, or just for natural? Yeah, for synth I love the Mito two thousand seven thousand, and then the um dude, dude. I I know exactly what you mean about that. Sorry, excuse me for one second. If you guys want to talk about this stone for a little bit more, I'm gonna grab this. I really like the finish on this stuff. It's really nice. Put it like right here, and then kind of like yeah, flip it up and down a little bit. It's definitely a more even finish in the the Copa number two. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. But still, do like the, the Koba number two is probably it's a better finish, but the Koba number two is definitely more enjoyable to sharpen on. It's like nice and bright and shiny, but has a good contrast. Yeah, I agree. But something about that second one, it's like it, the feel on this is really nice. It's like gliding with some cushion yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bit mm -hmm. smoother, the other one. How would you rate the smells? <laughs> I think that, like, I'm not testing them right now, so that's the way I'm rating them. The large Monzento, I think, is the best smelling of, of the uh, liquor being. I think Monzento in general smells the best. I guess just, just in general, smells. like, it just, it's like, Monzento itself that smells, smells like a, like, cold, mineral, like, like, like a cave. Cave, yeah. yeah, like water running somewhere. Alright, we go on to the next stone? Yeah. Cool. So, next up, what do we got? So Alright, so we have the uh, Okudo uh, Suita, the Copa number two. Uh, I guess we have three of these, so we'll go through number two, number one, and number three in that order because we're just not doing good with, uh, <laughs> with orders today. <laughs> cool. So uh, this one's got a little bit more like yellow, pinkish kind of color. Uh, it looks to be like some Renge pattern in parts of it. Uh, but it could just be like brown splotching. It doesn't quite look the same as Renge, except in this little corner over here. Uh, I think I recall from these ones from a long time ago, that these are all going to be on the harder, much finer grit side of things. So let's let's see what happens. But I, I really, I think I remember these ones being like crazy hard. Oh yeah. Yeah, crazy hard. Okuno is definitely like a, a famous 
Naruto, yeah. So it's Ohira and Okuro. Yeah, but even even within like the super famous things, it you don't always you don't always see cool things. Yeah. You know, there's there's like a wide variety of stuff out there, and also a wide variety of preferences. So like, I definitely sharpen in Japan. I definitely sharpen on like stones that are like outrageous expensive. Like yeah, stones. we were talking about this yesterday, yeah. right? Where there's like. You pick up the stone and you're like, oh, what is this? And they're like, oh, 10 grand. And you're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, but they're huge, they're right? Like, huge. like, you see them and they're like, yeah, it's some or next it's, level. Or it's like a suite as big as the, this hotel pad in terms yeah. of like size. It's nuts. I know. I was, I was sitting on one. I think it was like maybe six inches wide and like, I don't know, like a foot and a half long. <laughs> And then like two feet tall, <laughs> like you would just put a stool in front of it, and then you can sharpen on it because it's so tall that you don't like. It, th those those were ridiculous. Yeah, I remember when I was down in Kyoto. Like I sharpened, on, I think I spent a whole day sharpening like I think about twenty five to thirty different stones. Yeah. And like some of them were great, but they're, when you ask the price, on they're like, oh, five thousand. I'm like, oh, about that. Yeah, like they know which ones are really good, and they're like, these are the ones we're gonna stick it to you on. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're amazing. Yeah. Actually, I took home the. Number two favorite, which the funny thing, the number two favorite was actually way cheaper than. It's a funny thing, like I had, I upgraded the stones, like the number four and fives were like, you know, they're like really, really expensive. But I mean, yeah, I think it's a misconception amongst like people is like just because it's so expensive doesn't mean it's good. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes you find things that that suit your personal tastes that aren't crazy. So okay, so back to this stone for a second. It's a little bit slower cutting than the ones we used previously. You can still see Swarf coming off, it's hard. Uh, I, I feel like it's much harder and finer uh, than, than what we were using previously. Let me just do like quick <laughs> this is This is definitely a much harder stone. So, you know, from this one, it may take a lot more time to get the kind of level of result that you're looking for in terms of polish, but I feel like this probably has the potential to go much higher in polish than the ones that we had just been using a minute ago. I think this edge is going to be like super crisp. Would you, would you say this is a? Would you say this is a? Uraoshi? Oh, no? oh yeah, no, no, totally. I would use this for the the ura. How about the koba? It could. It's it's hard though. Like maybe maybe too hard. Would you mind passing me a piece of paper from underneath right over here? I just want to see what what this edge is like because I like. Sometimes you feel the stones and you immediately can tell like this is going to be the one that that has that kind of edge. Oh, oh yeah. I mean that's like I mean you, you can you can hear it but yeah. you can like feel it going through that. All right. All right I'm going to pass this one over to you. I don't think this is going to be your cup of tea though. No knowing you and the kind of you know, softer. I mean you you like things that I like normally. Ah, uh, yeah. It's hard. Yeah, I would. I, I personally wouldn't buy this one actually. Oh, I don't know. There, there, there's like, there are things there that make make sense of it, but uh, not necessarily everything. I almost feel like this thing needs like a nagura or something. Maybe you know what? And I have some that we can try if you want. We can use like some of the tomo nagura here, or like this is a really really hard one that I have here, uh, and see if that kind of stuff helps out a little bit. So that one is a piece of the Hideriyama. Um, I got this Hideriyama in when we first started carrying them and it had snapped a little bit, just perfectly, like like one sixth of the stone just came off the end. And so I was like, instant Nagara! And uh, been using it that way ever since. Does that help out for you? Yeah. Makes it a lot better? Yeah. You can see the cutting speed is nicer. Mm -hmm. I think it needs it. Yeah. Because I'm not doing so much stuff with super hard stones, I don't really pay attention so much to the Nagara. I haven't really kept them around, but I guess I guess I should start paying attention to that stuff and keep those things around a little bit more if we're going to have some harder stones like this. Yeah. I mean, with the Nagara, it's a lot more, more enjoyable, but definitely it's not my cup of tea completely. But with, yeah, the Nagara, with, with the Nagara, it's not bad. Cool. Alright, Sam, you want to give this one a shot? Yeah. I mean, the edge, the edge yeah. feels nice. Yes, it's it's funny sometimes that'll happen, right? You'll find the stone where you're like, I don't enjoy this, but then like the edge you get, you're like, this is this is awesome. <laughs> it's got like that really crisp bite to it. I don't know. 
I have a feeling that all three are going to kind of be like this, though. They're all going to be like on that super yeah. harder side of stuff. Yeah, so when it came to, to discussing stuff with our stone guy, um, this time I told him, like, I want to I get some things in that aren't things that I normally had around. Uh, I want to try and have some stuff that will be uh, a little bit more within the scope of what other people might like, not so much what I'm into. So let's try, like, some harder alto, and let's try some, like, harder finishing stones that might be more up the alley for people they like that kind of stuff than what I normally would go for. So this is this is what I got. <laughs> this is what I got. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting back there again in like a couple of months. It's always fun, you know, just like yeah. dig through the back room and see what stuff is hidden there. Because a lot of the guys, they have so much inventory no, that they, they've forgotten. Yeah. Like, absolutely, they have no clue what's going on back there. And so you'll like, you'll dig through and it'll be like this thing under this box behind some newspapers and you're like, ooh, what's this? And you can try it out and it'll be like, the best sweet though you've ever tried in your life or like and they're like oh it's uh oh, yeah they're like oh that one like you know it was from whatever my grandpa left it there and we just never touched it and uh oh but they don't even there like they don't even know it's there yeah yeah it's it's crazy it <laughs> blows my mind well when they killed it like I, he showed me like the warehouse and he, i'm like and it's see. they're stacked it's they're just like, stacked it's like ten tens of thousands of stones and then you're like he's like do you even know what you have he's like nope yeah it's like I, i'm trying to do inventory not so much. <laughs> no, it's inventory. These guys aren't doing inventory. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, right. So someone asks, uh, Daniel Berry asks, what is a Nagara? Um, a Nagara, there are a few different kinds of Nagara. Uh, there are like actual Nagara, like Nijiro Nagara. Um, what Nagara are, they're conditioning stones that you use uh, specifically on natural stones um, to work up mud or recondition surfaces. So like after you flatten, if you have deep scratches in there, you may want to use a Nagara to clean up the surface. There are also what's called Tomo Nagara, which are bits of other natural stones that you can use to condition the stone surface. And again, they help work up mud, so they'll improve cutting speed and tactile feedback by doing that. Um, anyways, that's what another is. Sam, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, for a hard stone, it feels really nice. Do you like that? For a hard, I mean, yeah, within, like within hard the stones, range of for hard, a hard stone, I like it. I like it smooth, cool. it's not skittish. Yeah. yeah, it definitely doesn't feel like, like slippery or yeah. skittish at all. That's true. Sweet. All right. Nice smell to it, too. <laughs> That's going to be our thing. We're going to have now, you know, like stone measurements and then like smell strength smell on like strength. a scale of one to ten. This was like a seven and a half, hints of pine. It will be like wine reviews. <laughs> All right. So this is the Okudo Suita Copa number three. Uh, smaller, uh, kind of more trapezoidal shaped, almost tombstone like. Boom. Um, cool. Let's see how this one goes. And again, yeah, that same dengue pattern in the lower section of the stone over here. Uh, and it looks like there is some suit, so there are some holes in the surface, uh, which is pretty common with Suita. Yep, Suita always has those Yeah, it's holes. the gas escaping um, as the stone was being formed. Yay, geology. What do you think, Josh? Smell? It's a softer smell. Um, <laughs> a little bit more grass-like. A little grass, like notes of oak and pine. I get some, some cherry on the some tongue. Dried grass, <laughs> the plains of the Serengeti. Plains of the Serengeti. It's a good one. I I'm worried that this section here is going to be a little bit coarser on the stone. Like you, if you run your hands over it, you can really feel that section. But let's see. And and that section doesn't actually feel as bad as I thought it was going to feel. But you feel more grip over there for sure. Whereas in the upper sections and other parts of the of the stone, it's uh, a little bit smoother. This one again, hard but not slippery. Clearly faster cutting than the last one uh, by like a noticeable degree. I'm I'm not against this one. It's a little bit more porous. You can see that it's soaking up a little bit more water. Man, I'm really not against this one. I can just tell by looking at it. Cuts fast. Something a little bit amazing about natural stones, from stone to stone, it's so different. Yeah, same mine, like same look, it same be, area. It come from like literally like a feet from a couple few feet from each other. I've, I've, I've seen, seen that actually. Like there was a time where I was with one of the stone dealers, and there was a big stone, and we we're like, we're gonna break this thing into like the smaller pieces because they have their 
their sizes, yeah. you know, like the, the 30s, the 50s, the 80s, all that kind of stuff. So they break them down into specific sizes so they fit X number into a box. And as we're cutting through, we're like, oh, let's test like different parts. And you can test like that you've cut from a stone, like the left side versus the right side, and it's different. Or like this level versus this level, and it's different. Uh, which is really like kind of a, a, impressive in a way, but just crazy how, how different stuff can be for being literally like a next door neighbor. Yeah, this is, this is again on the finer side of stuff. Still getting those like wispy white lines, not the kind of contrast, again, harder stone, so there's a little bit more streaking uh, around the curb area. I, I have a feeling this is going to be an edge that I like again, but uh, here, I'll give it a shot and let us know what you think. Yes, that, that lower mm, uh, right hand corner, you can feel it catch yep. like just in one spot or something. Yeah, I'd care it. Yeah. You can feel it when you run your fingertips over it a little bit. So uh, Daniel asked, are Nagara only for natural stones or can they also be used on hard ceramic stones? Uh, you could use natural Nagara on ceramic stones, uh, absolutely. And some people use them to recondition stone surfaces. There are also synthetic Nagara um, that are more for conditioning stone surfaces and cleaning up stone surfaces than they are for working up mud because the Nagara will be a different grit than the stone and you end up often with the lower grit mixed in with your higher grit stones which doesn't work out as well. But uh, yeah, they, they can be used to recondition stone surfaces. Now scratches on your stone surface aren't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, they can help produce faster cutting speeds, help the surface hold water better and improve tactile feedback. So it really depends and you have to think about what you like or don't like as you go through and, and do stuff for yourself. Sorry, go ahead, hear it with your thoughts. I mean, I think, um, I think it's as hard as the other one. Mm -hmm. um, I think the feedback is nice. Um, it's just definitely high, faster cutting. Yeah. But my love with it probably it's still does. Yeah, again, harder, harder stone. Yeah. All right, Sam, let's hear what you got to say about it. I don't, I don't smell this one so much either, as, you know, as long as we're going to talk about that <laughs> ridiculousness. This one doesn't have such a strong smell that I can smell over here, whereas some of the other ones, even from my distance away from it, which is like two and a half feet or so, uh, I could smell some of them. This one, not so much. So what do you think so far, Sam? Uh, very similar to the last one we just used. Yeah, but faster cutting. Uh, yeah, I definitely feel the coarseness right there yeah uh, yeah yeah it does feel faster cutting and you can I mean you can see it yeah. like you can see the metal <laughs> coming off of the blade and then after this we're on to one last stone right our grand finale oh, what's the yeah I messed up all the numbers for the the copas so we're going to one and then we have Shobu Suita I thought we did one already. No? No. no. All right. From two to three. Now we're oh, man. Four. All right. Cool. Making progress. You sure? Mm hmm. Oh, have been oh, you're right. I just thought I did because this one looked like a tombstone to remind me of another one. It kind of looks like that, my, this no, one no. for sure looks like yeah, it's like in in like a western, you know, where you see like yeah. the coffin maker in like the city, uh, like that reminds me of that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll show people in a second. All right, thoughts? Uh, what you said before? No, no, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's like the the scratch pattern along the edge is starting to get really fine, where it's becoming more of a mist and less of defined scratches. Um, and again, like I was saying, you know, when you look at it from a slight angle, all of a sudden it's just like a crazy mirror. Uh, sweet. All right. So now the tombstone. All right. So this is the uh, Okudo Suita Copa number one, um, the tombstone. Tell me this doesn't look like a tombstone. Bring it down a little bit lower. Right there. Boom. We should just call it that on the website. <laughs> this is the tombstone stone. 
It's down. <laughs> Let's readjust our stone holder here. Our stone stone holder? Our stone stone holder. Tombstone stone holder. So, uh, similar to the last ones, uh, there's some holes right here and a little gouge right here. Um, they could have been dug out by someone or could just be a natural part of, of how the, the stone is. And there's like a light section of Renge right here on the stone, but the rest is, is much more even and consistent. And same, hard. Uh, this one is fast cutting too. Feels, it feels like a very fine grit stone. I mean, these are fast. For these little guys, they're like super fast cutting. I should follow one of these up with like some of the finger stones so people can see. You know, because when you look at this, this finish is deceptive. You look and it looks like kind of uneven. You're like, how is that going to be? Is it good or bad? But I think it could be pretty sweet pretty, pretty quickly with very little work. All right. Oh man, and it's definitely like a brighter, a brighter look to it, and more more smooth and even than even the ones previously. But the edge is is brighter for sure. All right, here, give it a shot. Let us know what you think. Hmm. Plus, like, how cool is it to be like I sharpened on a tombstone? Okay. Definitely pretty hard. Initial stone of the Undertaker. <laughs> that doesn't feel bad at all, though. No, I think uh, of those three, this is my yeah. uh, my favorite feeling one so yeah. far. It's like a lot of natural stones in one one shot, and we've only been meaning to do this since like March. <laughs> all right. Uh, it says our sound is cutting in and out. Uh, sorry about that. Technology, some some stuff. Hmm. We're working on it. Actually, I like this one uh, the best out of the open of, of those yeah. three, right? Yeah. It like feels the best in terms of like uh, cutting speed versus like feel. Yeah, there was a little bit more give to the surface. Yeah. Like it's hard, but it's not as hard as those last two were. Especially when you build up the yeah. little bit of mud. All right, Sam, give it a shot. Let's see what you think. I'm surprised that like you know I'm, I'm watching the video here on my on my laptop as we're shooting it. And I'm surprised that the quality of video is actually like pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Like it's it's shockingly good for what we have set up in here right now. And then like on your phone it looks like so crisp. Yeah, smaller screens. That's the way to go. We're just making stuff for mobile yeah. content now. <laughs> you just gotta look at it on your uh, iWatch. That's that's gonna be the, <laughs> the best way to consume our videos. Highest resolution. Alright. That stone would be like good before like a, a really nicely tight cut. Yeah, or like I would use this as like a Uraoshi stone. Yeah. Like it's it's firm, it cuts fast. Sure. Yeah. And again, it's one of those ones where I'm, I'm like sure as I sharpen on it, I'm going to get that super crisp feeling edge. What's your favorite still for what I wish you just in the tendon besides Tsushima? Hmm. I guess when I go about it, I'm not, I don't switch stone. You know, like, hmm. I'll use, I'll use synthetic stones until I get up to like my last finishing stone. Yep. So like I may not use the Monzento or Alto or something like that before I get to the Suita. And so I'll be using whatever my Uraoshi stone is for the, the synthetic stuff. And then when I get to the, the finishing stone and the natural, that's gonna be the, the one that I use for sharpening for the Uraoshi and for the Koba. So like like that Suita gets it a lot, or, or even the Hirariyama or Oluchi mm -hmm. or like the older Takashima Wasero that I have. Um, yeah. Yeah, I end, up, I end up doing that. But really, like in synthetic stones, this Mido 7000, it's so cool for it. Yeah. All right, Sam, thoughts? In terms of looks, it's pretty 
you know, badass. <laughs> yeah. It does look like it too. Right? Young. Yeah. Uh, but probably my least favorite of the last three. That's funny. So we uh, liked it the best. And which one of those three did you like the best? The second one? The one we just tried, like, right before this? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, uh, uh, so it's just too hard, or? Yeah, like, skittish. Uh, okay. Which I don't like. Uh, but the finish is... I think the finish bad. looks nicer on this than the yeah. other ones also. Yeah. Like, it's definitely got a little nicer. bit more refined. Cool. All right. And then, on to the last stone. This, 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 part this is the one I'm most excited yeah, about, like, one. by far. Would you mind passing me the last stone? This is going to be the... There it is. So this is our Shobu Suita um, that I have been really excited about. Shiro Decent Suita. size. Yeah, nice, nice Shiro Suita. Um, man, looks beautiful. Sides are lacquered. Uh, let's, let's see how it goes. I, like, this is the kind of stone that I would sharpen on a lot. Like, this is exactly, in, in my collection, these are the stones that I use the most to finish uh, kitchen knives, like Yanagiba, Usuba, stuff like that. So there's some range here, uh, all around this area. Some cool little patterns over here with the brown, reddish, rust-colored looking stuff. And feels nice and smooth. And let's see how this goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So uh, this is my stone of the night. <laughs> We have Fight of the Night Honors, now we have Stone of the Night Honors. Uh, it feels nice and muddy. It's firm, but it has some give to the surface. It's, again, not super hard. Not as hard as those last ones that we were on. Um, really, really nice. I'll bet this is going to leave a super cool finish, too. This is, this is right up my alley. This is like the kind of thing you're going to like, Sam, I think. And Hero. We're all, we're all going to be on the same page on this one, I have a feeling. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like nice, nice mud, sweet. If you sharpen a honey, you can probably make like a really, really beautiful, like, like, like the white inch haze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that one. for sure. Like a nice, smooth, even thing all the way through the bevel. Yeah. So that this one was sharpened on a shiro suita. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then once like the mud is there, getting like a nice smooth looking even finish is a lot easier. Clearly I'm not going to have the time to do everything perfectly in this video, but I have a feeling. Oh, um, yeah, this is, this is way nicer. So here you can see a uh, pretty smooth and even contrast uh, with a, a little bit more work. Uh, there's some bow spots on this particular knife and a little tiny bit of streaking over here, um, but this this is totally the kind of thing that, I, I mean, that's super smooth and nice and even looking. I'm, I'm super about this. Cool. All right, Hero, you're up. All right. Caught like a little bit of skin, like right on the edge. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's nice, right? That's nice. Let's see this. And, there like, okay, so it's not, it's not like an inexpensive stone, but it's not crazy either. I think this one was like five fifty or something like that. Uh, it's just worth five fifty. This is uh, cool. This is nice. Watch, this doesn't even make it onto the website because Hero's gonna end up going. <laughs> well, I'm, gonna take, I'm gonna take it home uh, after this, guys. Sorry. I claim this one. I should have done this with those Ashia Suita. I mean, they went already, and it is what it is. But those ones were cool too, and. I guess because I've never been such a natural stone focused website, you know, people don't think about that stuff on our website, but I've had some pretty fun stuff around. It's been really nice for a lot of different things. And so as I'm thinking about those harder ones that we just got off of, I'll bet those would be really cool for like double bevel knives where I wasn't worried about like wide bevel or single bevel stuff so much, but where I just wanted that kind of like crisp edge. Yeah. I'll bet that would be really cool for that kind of stuff. But I, for me, I'm always thinking about like well, what's going to look pretty on a wide bevel or a single bevel, and yeah. I mean this is this is it. This is the stone. Yeah, I do love the feeling of. Oh yeah. Like the edge feeling of yeah. the uh, knuckle stone to sleep. Yeah, yeah. That that looks great. Yeah. All right, Sam, come come and get in on this enjoyment. Yeah. Oh, 
I mean, you can hear it. Like yeah, immediately, it like, you, you know, people start sharpening. You're like, oh, that's it. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. It's funny you know, for like all the stones we've done now that well, like immediately, you know, it's like we agree this is it. Although those two uh, Tomaya Copas were pretty cool. They're pretty cool. Yeah. I, mean, I like the Monsanto. Yeah. The harder, the, the bigger auto. Is like that that one was cool. Yeah. That's me my Tajima. I like that one. On the on the finer grit side of yeah. stuff. I think that really big auto, or the really big Monsanto rather, uh, was kind of nice for like yeah. a medium grit natural mm -hmm. stone. And it's huge. It lasts a while. Huge. It dishes faster than any natural stone because it's softer. But yeah. Like it's, but it's That's true, way. actually. Uh, they definitely require more flattening yeah. uh, than pretty much any other natural stone that I the have. Monsanto definitely dishes faster than anything else. But I think it's so, it, like, they're the stones that make it so easy to get a really nice looking base uh, yes. with, like, no effort. You know, it's like, it's instant. It just it's happens. It's so muddy that the, the high and low yeah. spot, like, you know, works on the high and lows. Sam, that's, yeah. you, you agree with us. Yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. hands down, right? <laughs> like, it's not even a, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. I did yeah, like the finish that. of that one. Oh, with the, the edge shine? Yeah. The, that, to my, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, the Shobu Tomai Copa, the second one that we did, which was yeah. the Shobu Tomai Copa number one. Oh, these numbers are going to get confusing. <laughs> we will come up with a better system for this. But in the meantime, you guys can see the kind of beautiful Kasumi finish that this has here. So, uh, we're going to try and get all these stones up on the website. Um, yeah. Oh, now, now Josh wants to get in on this. So, uh, you guys just said it was so good. Like, it's, it is it's good, really good. It's like, holy shit. You know what it reminds me of? The Yorosuita. Your shoulder suit, yeah. the yellow one. Wow. Yeah. That's cool, right? Yeah, it feels really nice. I have no frame of reference, but um, <laughs> it feels really good. Like natural stone. No, you use natural stone. Yeah, so yeah, but not. I don't have like extensive yeah. experience with them. Feels really good, yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's similar to the one that we use here. Like, they're talking about this one that we use here all the time. Uh, it's most similar to that. Cool. Um, and the smell. We got a test for the smell. Yeah. Uh, smell. We'll put smelling notes up on the website, too. <laughs> <laughs> smelling notes up there. All right. So, um, boom. So, uh, we got these all tested out. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing our thoughts on these and kind of seeing them in action. And not just one person, but a few people's thoughts on them. Uh, we're going to get them on the website. We're going to figure out a way that we can uh, link directly to the time slots that each of these stones fits into. So you'll be able to jump quickly and, and see what's going on with each of these stones. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, have a wonderful day. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later.